There are many different types of prison. The toughest prison I ever experienced was the six months of deep grief I went through after my brother's suicide in October 2013, two years ago. It's hard to explain my grief and pain, but let me try. I give you truth, my truth I give you. Ding, ding, ding. Heart shattering, bone rattling, attempted destruction of a person's body, mind and soul. A terrible thing is pure grief. It's a totally unique kind of pain and suffering from deep inside you. This pain, darkness and despair totally consuming you at any moment it chooses. It takes every bit of your strength to endure and survive. Endless belts and rounds with something that's basically trying to destroy and kill you every time it attacks. Sledgehammer blows from every and any angle you can think of. This boulder or weight the size of a 40 foot container filled with cavity blocks that made of lead just dropped on top of you. Unimaginable pain to try and explain. I suppose you just have to experience the worst kind of pure grief forced hand to understand. I didn't grieve properly for my dad when he died in July 2008. I mean, sure it was terrible and I suffered a lot, but I have to admit I never experienced this kind of pure and prolonged grief until November 2013. For nearly three weeks after I found my baby brother, I was on autopilot. A general, like a rock, I felt solid. Then out of nowhere, whammo. I had to sit down before I fell down. My breathing was reduced to gas of air. No idea what was happening to me. Pure fear and panic. End of the world stuff. Am I gonna die now? And then the rattles started. By the rattles I mean the actual bones inside of my skin. Inside, not outside. My bones just rattled and shook for how long I don't know. Five, ten minutes maybe. Totally paralyzed. Darkness washing over me and the whole body rattling away inside like a bare skeleton on a piece of string. Shook to the core or the center of my body. From inside the pit of my stomach, pure pain pulsing and throbbing out of every single bit of the body. Then it's welcome to, I'm only getting started with you. One, two, three nights at a time for weeks on end, tortured with minutes and images of finding John in that field. Forcing the guard had to get him down before everyone else arrived. The little time alone I had with him, trying to clean him up as best I could and clean the area around him. And then I was standing there as his mother got hold of him, showing her pain. It'll haunt me forever seeing her like that. His sisters, his wife wailing, family and friends standing around in shock, waiting for the priest to come and say a prayer, waiting for the funeral car to arrive and get him out of that godforsaken field. Total devastation and mental torture just got worse as days went on, trying to make any sense of it all. My mind will not allow me to relive or see those few hours in one go. I'm only allowed different snapshots and flashbacks of a few minutes here and there during that morning and afternoon in the field, living a nightmare no one should have to experience. It's hard to think and even say, but since losing and finding me baby bro, I've spent some days thinking, crying and grieving only for the old man, only dealing with things that have been buried away for over five years. Crying for me dad one day, crying for John the next, at times just for no reason at all. Just crying and no way to stop, crying when my eyes have been cried dry. No control, no say, no choice in the matter at all. Just bawling like a baby wishing you could stop. Bob hoping, no hope. Like it or lump it. You can't control grief and pain. There's no sympathy needed or wanted here. I'm just thinking out loud. What round is, what round is this, me old pal, grief? You can come at me as often as you want, because I swear I'll fight you every second, minute, day or night, any time you like for the rest of my life. I swear I'll never break or leave this stinking life or my loved ones by my own choice. I'll go kicking, screaming, loafing, punching, biting, gouging. I'll use everything and anything at my disposal to live and survive and defeat you. I'm not just starting to enjoy this end. Epic, seemingly never-ending fight for life. I'm starting to love it. I'm still standing after your best attempts to destroy me grief. Now do your worst. Ding, ding, ding. Mad crack down that rabbit hole to hell. So easy to get lost in it all. It's James Griffin Jr., the fourth of the Force 2014. I wrote that three months after my brother's death. As it turned out, I was lucky to only suffer a six-month sentence of uncontrollable deep grief. Other people can be in that prison of grief for years or even the rest of their lives. As I came out of my own grief and addiction in prisons, I went back to my faith and tried to take what lessons I could from the experience. In my search for the truth of who we are, where we come from and the meaning of life, I had a supernatural encounter with Jesus Christ. I'd like to share that experience which is all that I can. I'll never forget the night Jesus came and gave me my truth. It was last May in the middle of the night. I was unable to sleep. 
crying, destroyed with grief, but just forgiving everyone I blamed for my brother's death, forgiving everyone I felt had wronged me and my family, rightly or wrongly, but beating my demons and my addiction, but I was totally lost. Apart from my daughter, I didn't see any point in life. I was in a big pit and so much pain, and to be honest, I just wanted to crawl up there and die. Sitting on the side of the bed, a voice started speaking to me. This is what it said. Because you forgave those people and believed in me with all your heart, I am here to give you your truth. The reason you are here is to love your family as you have been loved. As he was saying this, I could see pictures of my family in my mind. My nanny, my ma, my dad, John and my three sisters growing up. Pictures of my nieces and nephews as well. All grown up good, decent and loving people because of the love we received from our grandparents and parents. That real felt love that all children and people should feel and know. Stop preaching to people. My truth is not for everyone. If I want people to know my truth, they'll get it from me. Stop trying to control everything. The more you try to control things, the more out of control they'll get. Stop judging people. Accept everyone for who they are. Cast all your cares, worries and burdens on me. I want to take all those from you. I'm your God. I got your back and nobody will ever touch you. Love your family the way you've been loved. That's your path. The other path leads to death and destruction. Keep my commandments and speak my truth. Since my brother John's death, I had a serious pain in my heart. It's like a real and constant pain, like a sliver or a piece of my heart had been sliced off inside my chest and left untreated. As Jesus spoke to me, I felt my heart being filled with an overwhelming love and that wound in my heart was healed. We might think we know what love is and feels like, but the love I felt from God was more powerful than anyone could ever imagine. The pure love of our Father in heaven. God is not a person in the sky. God is a verb and the verb is love. I believe in Jesus and the truth of God. I love to share my love with God and I know it's not for everyone, but I also know it's the truth and I've been commanded to speak it. I'll give you a couple of Bible verses from, firstly from Matthew. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy mind. That's the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. John 3.16 For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I just thought I'd share that and speak God's truth. He's real and he loves you more than you'll ever know. Love your families the way you've been loved. That's the path to life. Thank you and God bless you all.